afternoon and welcome to the subcommittee on planning dispositions and concessions. I'm Council Member Ben Kalis, the chair of the subcommittee. We're joined today by Council Member Ruben Diaz, Sr. Today we'll be holding a three public hearings and we'll be voting on a number of the projects. Our first hearing will be land use item 79, the MPLP Uptown 6 cluster in Council Member Perkins District in Manhattan. HPD seeks urban development action area project UDAP approvals pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and approval of an New 40-year Article 11 tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law under the Multifamily Preservation Loan Program, HPD has designed developer MPLP 6 Housing Development Fund Corporation, HDFC, to purchase the city-owned properties and develop the six existing partially occupied multifamily buildings to provide 81 affordable rental units, one superintendent unit, and five commercial units during construction current tenants, all of whom make between 11 and 29 percent of AMI will be relocated within the buildings. If relocation is necessary, legal tenants will have the right to return to an apartment of size suitable for the family composition within the cluster. Tenants offered temporary relocation during rehabilitation will be provided with a written relocation agreement. The vacant apartments, eight will be set aside for formerly homeless households and reminder, will be rented for a price affordable to a family earning no more than 80% of AMI. And now, uh, so I just, in English, uh, these are a group of six buildings that uh, the city uh, ended up in possession of. <coughs> the tenants have been there uh, as part of a till program, hoping to have ownership interest. Uh, the buildings are being taken from the till program and uh, being disposed of and given to a, a new HDFC. Uh, where they will rent uh, the units. People who uh, are there make between 10 and 30 percent of AMI according to self-reported information and they will be able to pay uh, a percentage of their income up to uh, 50 percent of AMI. Uh, this item is uh, supported by the local council member Bill Perkins who is not able to join us uh, but I will now open up the uh, public hearing on this item. Uh, I will now ask our committee counsel, Julie Lubin, to uh, swear in the panel. If you can please state your names for the record with the mics on. Lacey Tauber, HPD. Nelson Chan, HPD. Michael Rooney, MDG. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Yes. Yes, I do. You may begin. You ready? Okay. Land use num item number 79 consists of six partially occupied city-owned buildings uh, located at 118, 120, and 122 West 139th Street, 123 West 112th Street, 281 West 118th Street, and 30 West 132nd Street in Manhattan Council District 9. The project is known as Uptown 6 Cluster and is slated for redevelopment under HPD's Multifamily Preservation Loan Program, MPLP. Under the MPLP, sponsors purchase and rehabilitate city-owned and privately owned vacant and or occupied multiple dwellings in order to create rental housing with a range of affordability. The six buildings were taken into city ownership through in-rem foreclosure actions as early as 1973, and subsequently they entered into the TIL program in the late 1990s and early 2000s. However, in 2017, the buildings were transferred from the TIL program into MPLP and have since been net leased to the sponsor, MDG Design and Construction, LLC. In total, the cluster comprises 82 residential units, including a superintendent's unit and five vacant commercial spaces. There is a mixture of unit types, including 19 studios, two one-bedrooms, 28 two-bedrooms, 22 three-bedrooms, and 10 four-bedrooms. The sponsor is proposing to substantially rehabilitate all the buildings, and the work includes uh, the rehabilitation <coughs> of the facades, joint replacements, common areas, and all residential units, new bathrooms and kitchens, uh, stoves and refrigerators, new doors and windows, a new boiler, a new roof and, and facade, and yard repairs. All units will be rent stabilized. A portion of the units will be set aside for homeless households, and AMIs for existing tenants will not exceed 50%. The rents for the existing tenants will, betwe will be between $239 for a studio and $359 for a four-bedroom unit. 
Household income for vacant units will not exceed 80% AMI, and rents will range from $1,231 for a studio to $2,033 for a four-bedroom apartment. Existing tenants will be temporary re temporarily relocated during the construction period, and upon completion of the work will return to their apartments. Tenants will be checkerboarded within the building and also via external relocation to other buildings within the cluster. In order to facilitate long-term affordability of the rental units, HPD is also before the planning subcommittee seeking approval of Article 11 tax benefits for a term of 40 years coinciding with the regulatory agreement. The net present value of the exemption is $3,598,831. The cumulative tax benefit is $13,467,192. We added that at the end, just for you. <laughs> I ap appreciate the uh, transparency. Does the developer have any testimony? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that uh, we've had several meetings with the residents and uh, joint meetings, and we've been meeting with them individually uh, at their <coughs> apartments, and there's great excitement. Uh, they've been waiting a long time to have their buildings uh, renovated. Our scope of work is over 100,000 units. The, the units are basically brand new new bathrooms, kitchens, new flooring, new electric, refinishing the uh, walls, new windows. Uh, it's basically receiving a brand new unit. Um, so they're very excited about it and uh, we're excited to uh, uh, get, get started with the uh, work this summer. So uh, thank you for that, that is, that is helpful to know. Uh, are there any tenants uh, from these projects in the audience currently? Anyone here who wants to testify on this matter? Uh, okay, I, I see none. Uh, so I guess one question is, it, you're representing that you've been ma meeting with the tenants, you have a, you've had a chance to meet with every single tenant? Um, I can't say if we met with everyone um, later on. Mike, I'm not sure how many people do you think we've uh, actually met So I, you I need you to he repeat said, what he said. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, so Mike uh, Jr. said that uh, we've knocked on every door and he believes that we've reached uh, every uh, resident uh, in the buildings. Uh, were they advised of today's hearing and their opportunity to testify in support or opposition at all? Uh, I never notified them uh, uh, myself directly. Did HPD notify the tenants of their uh, opportunity to participate in this process publicly? Not to my knowledge. Fair enough. Uh, well, not necessarily fair enough. I, I think one of the questions is just moving forward, how to make sure that tenants can have meaningful participation. Uh, so these are till buildings, uh, and so the tenants were working towards ownership. Has that been brought up by the tenants, either with HPD or the developer? Uh, yes, uh, the tenants have uh, talked about it, and they were uh, at our meetings. They expressed their um, excitement that that long process uh, was finally over. They realized that they couldn't do it. We have a good relationship with each of the uh, tenant uh, board leaders, and um, uh, most of them know me either from the community, uh, from developing in Harlem for the last 20 years, uh, or as uh, I represent, used to represent uh, uh, many of the till buildings in the city, I've probably worked on over 200 till buildings over the uh, years representing uh, tenant groups. Uh, so uh, they knew me as soon as they saw us at the meeting and found out we uh, were the ones that were awarded the site, they were extremely excited. In your testimony, you indicate that uh, they folks will be limited to 30% of their income, the current rates uh, for existing tenants, what, what are the current rates? Of, so in your testimony, you say the existing tenants will be between 239 to 359 for between a studio and four bedroom unit. What are the current rents? Uh, right now, uh, I'm showing the current rents at 215. Again, these are ranges. So the, on the low for a studio, $215. For a two bedroom, 299 uh, for uh, three bedroom, 415, and four bedroom, 397 dollars. 315 for a four bedroom, so? Uh, 415 for a- That's currently? Currently. Okay, so 
you're projecting, just to be clear, according to HPD's testimony, for the rent to go up for studios to 239 so only about $24, and then for a four-bedroom unit, the rent would actually go down uh, by $64. So, sorry, well, it's $64. actually based on the on the tenant's income. So okay. the the way the rent restructuring works is that it would be either that the upon coming back to the building, they would pay either their current rent or thirty percent of their income, whichever is higher, capped at fifty percent of AMI. So how many of the tenants are likely to see an increase in their rent based on that thirty percent income criteria? So so far we've received twenty two tenant surveys where we. Uh, prior to the um, meeting with HPD during this transfer. Um, and out of the 22 tenant surveys, we see that 11 would experience an increase and 11 tenants will experience no increase. So, so it's about half and half. And I guess yeah. the other question is, so the existing AMIs in this building are very, very low. Uh, and so we're talking about uh, 10 to 30 percent. You're looking at changing the composition of the building to 80 percent of AMI. Is there a reason why it needs to be 80 percent of AMI? Could it be 60 percent or even 30 percent to match who's already living there? Um, the 80 percent AMI was to uh, bring in enough rental income to be able to support the mortgage that would renovate the buildings. So the 80% uh, was more born out of uh, the uh, loan amount uh, that was required to do the required work in the buildings. Uh, historically, we found uh, all the way back from the mid-1990s when we started doing buildings in Central Harlem, all the first buildings, we felt the, our largest success was mixing uh, current affordable residents with uh, people with a slightly higher AMI uh, and I think the mix back in the mid-90s was mixing 60% AMI with 80% AMI. So uh, usually what happens is uh, it creates uh, more of uh, a, a stable building. You have working people and non-working people, uh, incentivizes people to go to work. The uh, newer working people uh, that are 8% AMI tenants, uh, we find generally mentor uh, the other residents in the building and it becomes uh, a nice uh, mix. Uh, we also have the existing uh, tenant organizations are still uh, in place in the buildings that were represented as a till building. Uh, so those groups would still, uh, I would assume, stay organized and st still be well represented within the buildings. So we don't see any problem with the uh, mix in uh, incomes. In fact, we think it'll be more successful that way. What is the uh, AMI in the surrounding census block or neighborhood? I don't have that information readily available. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one ten, one ten to, to one thirty. Thanks. So, so you believe that this will actually still be below, and is that based on market or that's just based on census information? That's based, based on the market data. That's based on the market data. Okay. And that includes rent regulated units. Yes. Correct. Okay, and. Uh, you're receiving an Article 11 tax abatement. I want to thank HPD for publicly sharing the value of that abatement. Are you receiving an HPD, an additional HPD subsidy? Uh, yes, we'll be receiving um, a little over $8 million in HPD loan funds at a below market rate of interest. That will be mixed with uh, some bank funds from a uh, low income investment fund. So uh, LIHTC? Uh, no, a LIF, L-I-I-F, low, low Income Investment Fund would be giving the market rate loan. Okay. And uh, are you receiving any additional subsidy from HPD or just the HPD loan? Just the HPD loan. Uh, anything from HDC? Uh, no funding from HDC. Uh, Anything from LH to, uh, from, from low income housing tax credits? Uh, we're not using uh, low income housing tax credits on this project. Uh, federal? Uh, there are no federal uh, uh, incentives or uh, funds coming in the property. 
Uh, New York State, anything from New York State? Nothing from New York State. Uh, there is uh, developer uh, equity uh, that we're putting in about a uh, million three hundred thousand dollars, which represents about 10% uh, of the overall financing. The de developer equity was one million? A uh, million three. Uh, the folks who are doing the renovations, uh, will they receive health dis disability or, or pension benefits so that if they get hurt on the job, they can go see a doctor without going bankrupt or if they, uh, by chance, are not able to continue working because they're injured so badly, they, they won't uh, be <coughs> stuck without any income? Uh, all the contractors that would be working on the project will be required to uh, abide by uh, Obamacare. Uh, that's in place at, at the current time. Uh, whether or not they are exempt uh, themselves, uh, we did something similar a year ago with you on the uh, lot uh, resyndication project. Uh, and uh, we were also guaranteeing a minimum wage for all workers who all subcontracted for $15 an hour. Isn't that the minimum wage? Uh, that's the that's the wage that we're requiring all subs to make sure they're paying in addition to the uh, following the current uh, uh, federal requirement of Obamacare, which is many of our contractors are exempt because of the size of their companies. So, so under Obamacare, there's a requirement for employers to provide health to, insurance? To offer uh, medical to the workers, whether they take it or not. So, so so your contractors are have 10 or fewer employees or 11 or more employees? Well, it depends on each contract that that's hired, but I would say the majority of them will have less than, uh, will be uh, less than 10 to uh, 20 employees. Okay, so as of this year, the, the New York State minimum wage is $12, so you're requiring $13, which is what the minimum wage will be starting in 2020. Uh, we're requiring $15 an hour. Right, so just the, the additional three. Um, and then when the facilities are being operated, will the folks have health insurance, disability, or pension to, so that they continue working for you? Uh, the current management company, which is Concord, which is uh, an affiliate of ours, uh, has uh, in health insurance for all, res uh, all of its uh, employees, or offers health insurance. Some people obviously don't take it. So is, is it, do they offer any s subsidy or do they just procure it and the person has to pay 100%? I, I believe the portion that uh, Concord pays, 50%. And uh, do they have a specific wage rate that's commensurate with the community? Uh, well, obviously the uh, wage rate is commensurate with the community or else you wouldn't be able to hire them. But I believe uh, in general Concord pays more than uh, our competitive uh, uh, competitors in the community. Fair. A and are you an MWBE? Is your contractor an MWBE, your uh, architect, so on and so forth? Uh, the architect is uh, uh, MWBE, so it's a minority and a woman-owned. Uh, uh, she has a contract for uh, half a million dollars as the architect, and um, uh, we plan. We already sent in our utilization plan to HPD, and we've exceeded the uh, woman and minority uh, requirements. Local hire. Uh, local hiring, uh, we're probably the leader in local hiring. Uh, for example, we did the Bayside project uh, with NYCHA recently. We had, uh, we have 83 NYCHA hires. We hired 74 people locally and 367 people on one job. If somebody is watching at home and they would like a job uh, working on this project uh, and they're from the neighborhood, how do they get a job? Uh, we've uh, told the residents at the buildings, at least, uh, that anybody that wanted a job, we reach out to them. But um, uh, MDG is a general contractor to make that clear. And what we do is if we have good uh, local hires uh, that are available to work, uh, we pass their names along 
uh, to our subcontractors, but we do have a requirement through a New York City hire, so we'd recommend them to get into the system because their first hiring requirement is through NYC uh, hire. Uh, so, so to be clear, do they go to you or do they go to how do they how do they get a job? They would come Watching at home at TV, there's yeah. somebody said jobs. How do I get it? They would call us, and we would send them to the appropriate people to get into the database for NYC hire. What what number should they call? Uh, they would call our office at 631-421-7371, and uh, what was the station or was it 152? Thank you, Milton, and, and then I, you have. Uh, Five commercial spaces. Uh, what is the what is your goal for that? Are we are we looking at uh, banks? Is this an underbanked community? If it is an overbanked community, what have you? Are we looking at supermarket? Are we looking at fresh? Are we looking at uh, a a health provider that accepts Medicaid? Are we looking at mom and pop, or are all of them just going to get merged? What is these are all very extremely small um, commercial spaces, so we're looking for a locally based um, commercial businesses that are looking to have below rent, uh, below market rent. Uh, so we purposely set the rents below market. I was looking for the amount per square foot. Thirty to thirty dollars. Thirty dollars a square foot. So we're renting at thirty thirty dollars a square foot compared to the market, which I believe is eighty to a hundred dollars a square foot currently. And we own and manage a lot of buildings in Central Harlem, so uh, th those rents are accurate. I think those are all of the uh, questions. I want to thank you and HPD for your transparency and being ready with many of the answers. Uh, we'll send any additional questions that we might have, uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify on this land use item? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this application. Our next public hearing will be on land use item 80, the 615 West 150th Street cluster for properties in Councilmember Levine's district in Manhattan. HPD seek urban development action area project UDAP for approvals pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and approval of new, a new 40-year tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 Private Housing Finance Law. The city will convey two partially occupied city-owned residential buildings, 615 West 150th Street and 601 West 148th Street to restoring communities HDFC. The buildings will be substantially rehabilitated by and tenants will be temporarily relocated during construction. They will have written relocation agreements providing for their return to their apartments once construction is completed. The buildings will then be conveyed in cooperative HTFC formed by the building's tenants. Existing tenants will be able to purchase their shares in the call for $2,500 per unit. Vacant apartments will be sold for a price affordable to a family earning no more than 165% of AMI as restricted under the term sheet. However, the HPD regulatory agreement which runs with the land is more restrictive. Calling for vacant units to be sold for a price affordable to a family making between 85 and 95% of the area mean income. All units will be We'll have resale restrictions, which will include maximum sale prices, income restrictions on new purchasers, limitations on profits from sale proceeds, and asset caps. Uh, uh, Council Member Levine has a statement, but uh, he, and he is on his way, so we will uh, start by, if you can please state your names for the record. Lacey Tauber, HPD. Christine Ratzoff, HPD. Ingrid Gomez, Community League of the Heights. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will now instruct the council to swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Yes. 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 Please begin. All right. Land use item number 80 consists of the proposed disposition of two partially occupied city-owned properties, as well as Article 11 tax benefits for the buildings located at 615 West 150th Street and 601 West 148th Street, a.k.a. 3601 Broadway, in Manhattan Council District 7. Known as the 615 West 150th Street Cluster, the buildings entered city ownership through in rem foreclosure actions in 1981 and 1990, respectively, for non-payment of real property taxes. 
In 1996, 615 West 150th Street entered HPD's tenant interim lease till program, and uh, 601 West 48th Street entered the program in 2001. As a requirement of the TIL program, tenants from form tenant associations to manage their buildings and collect rents under a net lease from the City of New York. <laughs> Currently, the tenants are ready to move forward with the next steps in cooperative conversion under HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, ANCP. As part of ANCP, HPD selects qualified developers to rehabilitate distressed city-owned occupied multifamily properties managed under the TIL program in order to create affordable cooperatives for low to moderate income households. The buildings will be transferred to Restoring Communities HDFC, uh, which we call Neighborhood Restore, an Article 11 nonprofit upon construction loan closing. Restoring Communities will hold title and oversee the rehabilitation and cooperative conversion that will be undertaken by Community League of the Heights, Inc., or CLOTH, the developer selected through a request for qualifications, RFQ. The developer will sign a site development and management agreement with restoring communities that will be in effect until co-op conversion occurs when title will be transferred to the individual cooperatives. From cooperative conversion, the developer will remain the property manager for at least one year. After the first year, the co-op will have the choice of keeping the developer as their property manager or hiring a new company, which would be approved by HPD. The 615 West 150th Street cluster has a total of 80 units that includes a, mi includes a mixture of unit types. There are 12 one-bedroom, 42 two-bedroom, 25 three-bedroom, and one four-bedroom apartments. Existing occupants will be able to purchase their unit for $2,500, and the initial maintenance is anticipated to be set at 35% AMI, or approximately $649 for a one-bedroom unit, $785 for a two-bedroom apartment, and $901 for a three-bedroom apartment, and the four-bedroom apartment will be 1,010. Household AMI targets for vacant properties are 85 to 95% AMI. The buildings will undergo a substantial rehabilitation. The work will consist of structural joist replacement work, electrical upgrades, and replacement of building systems, including new windows, a new roof, plumbing upgrades, and installation of a new boiler. Both buildings will require design changes to ensure that layouts conform to the 2014 DOB building code and are handicap accessible. The scope of work also includes new bathrooms, kitchens, entry doors, masonry work, flooring, mailboxes, hallway upgrades with bi-level lighting, painting, as and asbestos and lead removal. The estimated development cost for both buildings combined is approximately $30 million. Tenants will be temporarily relocated during rehabilitation in accordance with a plan currently being developed by the developer. It is expected that the relocation units will be identified in the local private market. All relocated tenants will sign relocation agreements, which are legally binding, giving tenants the right to return to their original units. Any existing tenant requesting to return to a different unit based on physical limitations may be accommodated upon written consent by HPD. HPD is before the subcommittee seeking disposition approval and Article 11 tax benefits for a term of 40 years coinciding with the regulatory agreement in order to facilitate continued affordability of the cooperative. The cumulative value of the tax benefits is approximately $12,110,060 for both properties. like to recognize that we've been joined by uh, Council Member Mark Levine in whose district uh, land use item 8615 West 150th Street cluster is uh, for a statement. I'm just going to very briefly uh, say how excited I am that what has been almost a two decade journey is now nearing a major milestone. This building has been um, uh, the residents of the building have really been suffering for a long time uh, since the days of it being owned by uh, a slumlord. And we're thrilled that we are putting together what will be an incredible plan. I thank HPD for your perseverance on this. Um, it's a complicated deal physically, financially, and otherwise, but it's going to be life changing for these residents. Um, we have a wonderful nonprofit developer partner uh, in Community League of the Heights, AK Cloth, um, which has um, been a key ingredient of success for this building. And I am excited now uh, to see the work begin immediately and certainly encourage my colleagues on the committee and the broader council to approve this uh, item. Thank you, Mr. Staff.
Thank you. Uh, and uh, something that wasn't necessarily mentioned in the uh, testimony, but will there be any community benefits in this project, such as a basement community facility or community room? Yes, so the, the current um, properties, one has a commercial space um, and the other does not. So 601 West 148th Street does have a commercial space that's currently vacant. Um, actually, excuse me, there's two commercial spaces that um, are occupied by a salon and a computer store. They'll be, they'll be rehabbed um, and they will be marketed. Uh, the, the, the income coming in will help generate uh, revenue for the, for the co-op. The other property, 615 West 150th Street, currently has two basement units that are illegal. They don't comply with light and air requirements. And so they'll actually be converted into a community facility that will be marketed for uh, use by a doctor's office or another nonprofit partner. In your testimony, you shared the tax abatement uh, cumulative value. Do you have the net present value? The net present value for the cluster is $3.3 million, and that's the 40-year exemption. Thank you. Uh, and this has 35 vacant units? There's currently 27 vacant units between both buildings. 27 vacant units, and so that's 53 occupied? Correct. Okay. And uh, what are the current AMIs for the 53 units? The self-reported uh, income for the 53 existing tenants um, at its lowest is 7% AMI, but at its highest is 131% AMI. Um, those are self-reported. We do um, income qualify, but that's typically one section eight has been offered, and we're actually qualifying for the New York State grant, the Affordable Housing Corporation grant. At that time, we actually check documents. And what is the AMI in the surrounding neighborhood? Uh, the surrounding neighborhood uh, has an average income uh, of 120% of AMI. And in terms of the 53 folks who are going to get to buy their co-ops for $2,500, can they sell their co-op the next day? Uh, is there anything to stop folks from turning these from units that are serving somebody at 7% 7, 7 of AMI to a unit that is serving somebody at 95% of AMI overnight and then taking $200,000 and just running? So within the regulatory agreement, there are provisions that do restrict um, the income requirements and also the value of, upon each sale. So after co-op conversion, yes, an owner can turn around and sell their unit the next day. They own it. They, can, they have that authority. But in terms of how much value they can recognize, it is restricted. Um, every unit is subject to a profit sharing or a flip tax schedule. The longer that you're in the unit, the more value you can retain. The, the profit that is required to be flipped back to the co-op actually pays down some of the HPD debt on the property, and it also pays into an operating reserve for future use for the co-op. Uh, in terms of subsidies, so uh, there's an Article 11 tax abatement. What type of, uh, are you, is the developer receiving any other subsidies from HPD? Yes. Um, this project is, is uh, receiving a substantial amount of city capital for toward the substantial renovation of the buildings. Um, we are investing um, about $250,000 per unit, so that's 80 units. Um, so we are covering a majority of the renovations for this building. I also wanted to mention that the council member, Mark Levine, and also the borough president, Gail Brewer, uh, made a significant contribution of Res OA funds. They are city capital funds, but they are at the discretion of the elected official. Um, and they, they put a, a significant amount of Res OA into this project in order to help buy down um, the private debt um, so that we can keep the maintenance, the co-op maintenance, very low. Mark, how much did you uh, invest <laughs> with our borough president? I, 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 it, it, 
is substantial. I have yeah. that, actually. It was $3.2 million from Borough President Brewer and 900000 from Council Member Levine. Thank you. That is quite an investment. <laughs> so. Important project. A absolutely. So the HPD subsidy of 250000 per unit is under what program? The Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, ANCP. Are there any HD, uh, is there any additional H HPD subsidy? No. Uh, any HDC subsidies? No. Uh, low income housing tax credits, federal, state, New York State? No tax credits, but <clears throat> we have applied for, with, with our partner, Restoring Communities, HFC, uh, through the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, we have applied for a home ownership grant of up to $40,000 per unit which also helps pay down the construction debt so that we can keep maintenance very low. In terms of the uh, work that's going to be done, will the workers on the site have health insurance, disability, or pension benefits so that uh, if they get injured in the job, they can actually seek medical treatment and get better, or if worst case scenario, they can't keep working, that they and their family will still have a stream of income, and when they're done doing all these renovations, they can retire? To be transparent, we had not um, discussed this before, but we, ha we are complying with all of the HPD regulations in terms of MWBE, New York City Hire, we also will go back to our contractor and have a conversation with him on this. Thank you, and similarly for the folks who will be managing the building day to day, same question. Um, as um, Christine mentioned before, we will be there for the first year, then afterwards, and we do, meaning CLAW, we do have ins health insurance after the first year, they will have the opportunity to choose another management company. And in terms of this work, it seems substantial in, in the millions of dollars. Uh, is there an opportunity for folks in the local neighborhood to uh, work on this? Is there a local hire requirement on this? Yes, the New York City hire. It will be part of the contract. And if somebody is, is watching at home and they're grateful to Councilmember Levine for his investment and they would like to get a job, how do they apply for NYC hire so that they can work and build in their own community? We will have signs posted at the building and we will have that information also on our website. Okay, and, and your website for those watching at home? Um, www.cloth159. Dot org, yes. <laughs> and do you have any uh, I, any inclination what you're thinking for the basement community facility? I don't think the um, the, the, the facility the will be marketed at the mm -hmm. time that it's completed. Yeah. So at current, we don't have someone in mind, but as soon as the space is ready for use, then it'll be marketed to a nonprofit or um, a medical uh, facility partner. And that's what I think the, the tenant associations have mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned MWBE. Do you, do you know whether any of the professionals, whether they're contractors, architects, or others on this project uh, will be MWBE already? Yes, um, the goal amount is just over $3 million. The architect is MWB, the um, title company, MWB, um, what else? And the move-in company. Okay, uh, thank you. Does anyone else, we've been joined by Council Member Vanessa Gibson, uh, committee member. Does anyone else have any other questions? Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this application and excuse this panel. Uh,
because we now have a quorum, we will move to a vote prior to opening up our last public hearing of the day on land use item 81. We'll be voting on the following applications, which are subject to the hearing on our May 1st subcommittee meeting. We vote to approve land use item 66, the PRC Tiffany Street application for property located at 975 Tiffany Street in Chow Salamanca's district in the Bronx. HPD seeks approval of a new Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 40 years pursuant to Section 577 of private housing finance law. This action will facilitate the development of a new eight-story, 100% affordable housing building with 161 residential neighborhood units in the Bronx. Of the 161 units, 24 will be set aside for formerly homeless households, 22 units at 30% of AMI, 24 units at 40% of AMI, 16 units 50 percent of ami 14 units at 60 percent of ami and 60 units will be rented at 80 percent of ami but be available to households making up to 100 percent of ami we will vote to approve bethany place application land use item 68 for property located at 301 west 153rd street and 2091 frederick douglas boulevard in council member perkins district in manhattan the subject property is an existing 23 unit building the building which Already receives a full tax exemption as fully occupied and current tenants income ranges from 70 to 80 percent of AMI. Vacant units will be income restricted including five units at 100 percent of AMI and 18 units at 130 percent AMI. Extension of the term of the Article 11 tax exemption is necessary in order to match the life and first position loan from HDC. We will vote to approve the two buildings tenants united HDFC application land use item 71 property in council member Rivera's district in Manhattan HPD seeks UDAP approvals under article 16 of general municipal law and article 11 tax exemption under private housing finance law for property located at 280 East 3rd Street and 230 East 14th 4th Street the properties are two six-story multiple dwellings with 36 rental units all units are fully occupied and targeted to households at 60 to 80 percent of AMI currently there is no exemption provided from the real property taxation and significant tax arrears to preserve the rental affordability and prevent tenant displacement while also addressing retroactive tax burden the city the current owners will transfer the deed to the city who will then free and clear of taxes convey the property to buildings tenants united housing development fund company hdfc under the new regulatory agreement hdfc will preserve and rehabilitate such buildings and continue to provide affordable rent stabilized dwelling units we will also vote to approve chs application land use item 72 for a 40-year tax exemption pursuant to article 11 of the private housing finance law Property located at 752 McDonough Street and 1638 Broadway in Councilmember Amprey Samuels District in Brooklyn. These two buildings are part of a 32 building CHA Corporation for Supportive Housing portfolio that entered into a new regulatory agreement with HPD in 2015. The Article 11 tax exemption for those two buildings will replace a different type of tax exemption. 421C that was erroneously applied. The exemption will last for 35 years from 2015 and be contemporaneous with new regulatory agreement. We'll also be voting on the two applications that we held hearings on this afternoon, land use item 7. D9 MPLP Uptown 6 Cluster and Land Use Item 8615 West 50th Street Cluster. The local council members in support of approval for all the applications I've described. I will now call for a vote in the accordance with the recommendations of the local council members to approve Land Use Item 66, 68, 71, 72, 79, and 80. Council, please call the roll. Chair Kalos. Aye on all. Gibson. Aye on all. Diaz. Aye on all. The land use items are approved by a vote of three in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions and referred to the full land use committee. We will now move on to our public hearing on land use item 81, the 105th Street Amsterdam Avenue application property located in Councilmember Levine's district in Manhattan. Would Councilmember Levine like to make a statement on the matter? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, I'm going to apologize in advance that I won't be able to stay for the remainder of the hearing. I have a um, very busy schedule today, but I did want to express my support for this project. These two buildings in the Manhattan Valley neighborhood have been um, through a 40-year odyssey. They actually, um, the city took them over, uh, believe it or not, in 1978 um, when we had a very bad actor who had owned the buildings. So families have, have grown and kids have been born and people have uh, passed on uh, multiple generations now in these buildings. Um, they have been in the, uh, in the TIL program now, I believe, since the 90s. So uh, these folks have been waiting for a long time. And this is a, an incredibly hopeful moment for them. Uh, we're, we're excited that this deal has come together. Um, Genesis has been an outstanding partner uh, for my office and for uh, these residents. So um, we're very happy um, that they're leading this project. Um, I understand we're not voting today, but I certainly will be uh, when the time comes, uh, encouraging uh, my colleagues on the committee 
uh, to support this important project. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and uh, your investment in the last uh, project uh, shows that you put your money where your mouth is on all of this, and uh, you're one of the most involved members in building these affordable housing and preserving this affordable housing, and, and it's just uh, your, your community benefits. Uh, if you can please state your names for the record, and our committee council will swear you in. Lacey Talbert, HPD. Christine Rutzloff, HPD. Adam Brionis, Genesis Companies. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 If you can hold for one moment, we'd like to uh, continue the roll. Continued vote on the land use items. Deutsch. Yes. The land use items are approved by a vote of four in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, and referred to the full land use committee. You may now begin. Land use item 81 consists of the proposed disposition of two partially occupied city-owned properties, um, as well as Article 11 tax benefits for the buildings located at 107 West 105th Street and 891 Amsterdam Avenue, AKA 161 West 108th Street in Manhattan Council District 7. Known as the, 100, the 105th Street and Amsterdam Avenue project, both buildings entered city ownership through in-rem foreclosure actions in 1978 and 1974, respectively, for non-payment of real property taxes and opted into the TIL tenant interim lease program between 1998 and 1999. As a requirement of the TIL program, tenants form tenant associations to manage their buildings and collect rents under a net lease from the City of New York. Currently, the tenants are ready to move forward with the next steps in cooperative conversion under HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program. As part of ANCP, HPD selects qualified developers to rehabilitate distressed city-owned occupied multifamily properties managed under the TIL program in order to create affordable cooperatives for low to moderate income households. The buildings will be transferred to Restoring Communities HGFC, Neighborhood Restore, an Article 11 nonprofit upon construction loan closing. Restoring uh, communities will hold title and oversee the rehabilitation and cooperative conversion that will be undertaken by Genesis Companies LLC, the developer selected through a request for qualifications, RFQ. The developer will sign a site development and management agreement with restoring communities that will be in effect until co-op conversion occurs when title will be transferred to the individual cooperatives. From cooperative conversion, the developer will remain the property manager for at least one year. After the first year, the co-op will have the choice of keeping the developer as their property manager or hiring a new company which would be approved by HPD. The 105th Street and Amsterdam Avenue project has a total of 28 two-bedroom units. Existing occupants will be able to purchase their unit for $2,500 and the initial maintenance is anticipated to be set at 45% of AMI or $1,005 per month for a two-bedroom unit. Total household income for subsequent purchasers may not exceed 110% of AMI and the price cannot exceed a price affordable to a purchaser at 100% AMI. The buildings will undergo a substantial rehabilitation. The work will consist of structural joist replacement work as needed, electrical upgrades, and replacement of building systems, including new windows, a new roof, plumbing upgrades, and installation of a new boiler. Both buildings will be required to comply with federal accessibility requirements. The scope of work also includes new bathrooms, kitchens, entry doors, masonry work, flooring, mailboxes, hallway upgrades with bi-level lighting, painting, and asbestos and lead removal. The estimated development cost is approximately $12 million. Tenants will be temporary re temporarily, <laughs> temporarily relocated during rehabilitation in accordance with the plan the developer is currently formulating. It is expected that the relocation units will be identified in the local <coughs> private market. All relocated tenants will sign relocation agreements, which are legally binding, giving them the right to return to their original units. Any existing tenant requesting to return to a different unit based on physical limitations may be accommodated upon written consent by HPD. HPD is before the subcommittee seeking disposition approval and Article 11 tax benefits for a term of 40 years coinciding with the regulatory agreement in order to facilitate continued affordability of the cooperative. The cumulative value of the tax exemption is approximately $5,089,855. And the net present value is 
831. One more time. I, I <laughs> Which one? Both? The, the, the net present. 3,598,831. Uh, the cumulative value seems awfully close to your uh, net present value. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got the numbers mixed up. It's OK. Oh, you know what? I think that we pulled that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Sorry, here are the correct ones. Cumulative, 5,089,856. Uh, net present val value, 1,421,960. My apologies. No, oh, that, that is an honest mistake. Uh, and so the sub, how many of the, uh, we're on subsidies, let's stay there. Uh, this is an ANCP HPD subsidy? Correct. Is it uh, the same value per unit or a different value per unit? The, the current estimate is 266000 per unit for a total investment of $7.4 million in city capital. Is there, are there any additional HPD subsidies? No. HDC? No. There is, on this particular project, um, there was an award of $3.6 million uh, in um, what did I do wrong? collegiate funds, thank oh. you, um, which was a settlement that the city received a significant of, uh, amount of money in order to um, conduct development work in certain neighborhoods. These two till properties are the only properties located in a specific geographic area. Um, and so the $7.4 million that I quoted, $3.6 million of that is the collegiate funds. If you were to classify that, what would you classify that as? The, the settlement funds? Would you, would you call that? It is capital because it, it, it does. So it's, it's city capital. Correct. It's a fairly unique circumstance. So there are other projects also receiving collegiate funds. Uh, no, uh, no tax credits, no federal, no state grants. The only state monies in this project is the Affordable Housing Corporation, the AHC grant, at up to forty thousand dollars per unit. Okay. Is there any uh, private funds in this project? No. Uh, excuse me. There is a uh, private loan. Um, from Chase Bank in order to facilitate the renovation. Okay. How many units are currently occupied? There's currently 21 units occupied and seven vacancies for a total of 28 units. What are the current AMIs of existing tenants? Existing families, uh, self-reported incomes between 8% of area median income and 121% of area median income. And what is the neighborhood's a AMI? Again, this is close to 120% of AMI on average. And uh, what are the... Uh, terms of the, so a, an existing tenant can pay 2500 to buy one of these co-ops. Uh, these co-ops otherwise would be worth, uh, I believe your testimony stated how much they were being sold for. How much are they being sold for? The two bedrooms, the vacant two bedrooms would be sold at 268000 Okay. Approximately so 268000 um, which is... Compared to the market, it's 65% less than the market. The average in the market is about $773,000 $773, for a unit. So what is to stop a tenant for selling their uh, unit for $773,000 and taking that windfall or selling it for $200,000 and taking a windfall there? There's a number of restrictions that come along with the regulatory agreement, the co-op regulatory agreement. Um, one of them is that 
there's an income restriction for future buyers, and that income restriction also guides the purchase price for future buyers. So the, the purchase price for future buyers cannot be any higher than, I believe this is 110, 110% of area median income. Um, so we would never get to that uh, 770 um, with a purchase price affordable to 110. We're pretty close to that right now at 268. Um, additionally, there's asset caps, there's the requirement to be a first time home buyer, there's, um, there's training, ongoing training requirements, there's a number of restrictions in order to keep this affordable. So what, what is the flip, so if somebody sells it, they have to pay a portion of their profits to the co-op to help defray costs. Mm -hmm. uh, if they sell it year one, what is the flip tax? Sure, so the flip tax or the, the profit sharing schedule um, for any of the new purchasers, including the existing tenants, within the first three years, they cannot realize a profit. They get back what they paid in, they get back what it costs to, to do the closing, but they don't recognize a profit. In year four, they start to recognize a profit, and every year thereafter, it increases until year 15. What is the profit in year four, and what is the profit in year 15? The profit in year four for an insider is 5% of the sale profit. Um, the rest of that comes back to the co-op to pay down debt and also go into the reserves. And then in year 15, when it, when it caps or maxes out, it's, uh, they can retain 80% of the profit. Okay. 20% so comes back. So if you're s just using 200,000, then if they sell as soon as they can, they get nothing. Uh, if they sell at year four, they get $10,000. And if they stay for 15 years, then they get 160,000 and, and we're not, encountering inflation or the increases in AMI and what have you, but that's just the back of the envelope. That's a good estimate, yes. Okay. Uh, there is a commercial, how many commercial units are there? There is one commercial unit um, currently at 981 Amsterdam, AKA 161 West 108th Street. It is vacant. And uh, what steps will be, is, th is there going to be a big box store there, a chain, or will it be a local mom and pop and what steps are being taken to ensure folks can actually use it in the community? So the commercial space is approximately 2,000 square feet. Um, it is a decent size, but it's, it's not really a big box store size. Um, the estimated rent for that particular space is, hold on, help me out here, what is the rent for that space? 33 per square foot? Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty, um, it's, it's lower than the market, $33 a square foot. Um, so that way we can attract uh, a potential occupant post construction completion. The goal is to make sure that we have a, an occupant or a tenant in that commercial space that is, that is a paying tenant that can help subsidize the co-op costs. Thank you. And for the developer, uh, I think you know the questions that are coming. When the rehabilitation work is being done, uh, will the folks doing that work have have health insurance, disability insurance, and, and pension benefits? Sure. Uh, we will discuss that with our third-party general contractor. We've not had that conversation w with them yet. But as the developer, we will be overseeing them to ensure that they comply with all relevant regulations and laws uh, here in New York City. Um, our uh, Property manager will be Concord Management. Uh, so I know I'm skipping ahead a bit, but they will obviously they've obviously outlined their benefit uh, package. Okay, so, sorry about that. And so for the health, is it, do you, who, who's your third party control? Company? Uh, for our general contractor, it will be ETC companies. Uh, MWBE? Uh, Genesis Companies is a certified MWBE. ETC is not an MWBE. Architects? Uh, Romines Architecture, uh, not a certified MBE. Uh, our lead construction manager is a third party consultant, and uh, we need to confirm this with her, but she is a minority woman owned business. Okay, local hire. Uh, we will comply with NYC hire. Uh, we will post signs outside of the building as well as provide a link on our website. Okay, 
believe that's all folks. Uh, is there anyone here from the public who wishes to testify on this item? Uh, folks will need to have filled out these forms if they did. Okay, I see no one who is interested in testifying from the uh, public. Uh, I will now close the public hearing on this application and this application will be laid over. I'd like to thank the... Uh, I'd like to thank the council and land use staff for preparing today's hearing and the members of the public and my colleagues for attending. And uh, we will hold the vote open. Uh, so I'll turn this over to the uh, land use council.